Hey there, it's Graciela here. In this video, we're going to check some examples of how to handle date pickers in a web page using Power Automate for desktop. This is the first web page we're going to work with. And as you can see, what a regular user would do to select a date here, they would just go to this drop down and then select custom date. And then they would be able to select the month, the year and the actual date. And they can also use this errors to work with that. And uh, I think that it's quite complicated to do all these actions because sometimes you don't have this month and year selectors. Sometimes you just have these errors and the date pickers all work very differently. So one of the best ways to do this is to type in directly date picker because most of them, they will give you the option to select, but that most of the date pickers that I have worked with, they always have a way that you can input the data. That means writing the date that you want to work on. For example, if I just type in December 31st of 2022, you can see that if I click outside this or if I select 2023, you can see that if I click outside that and then I click on update, this date picker automatically finds the information based on my input, even though I didn't actually select the date. And that's the approach that we are going to use to automate this using Power Automate. So I'm just going to go to Power Automate, then click on the recorder and uh, we get this um, window in which I can just click on launch new browser. I'm going to launch Chrome and I'm going to start at this link. And the first thing we do is we select this drop down, then we select custom date. And as you can see, Power Automate is recording everything that we are clicking on and everything we're doing in this web page. And again, I could use these buttons, but um, you can see that that can get complicated if we try to use it that way. But if I just click on this directly and then I just type in my, my date, you can see that Power Automate is recognizing that I am typing in in this, even though it's a date picker behind the scenes, it can also work as an input text. And that is how Power Automate is recognizing this. And you can see that the web page is recognizing as well or input properly. So then we just click on update and then we keep doing whatever we need to do after we select a date. In this case, it's just exporting and then exporting in an Excel format. Once I'm done with that, I just go to done. And you can see that Power Automate has uh, recorded everything. In this case, um, these steps are uh, were recorded and we don't need them, so I'm just going to remove them. And something that we can do is suggest, for example, use an input for the date. And uh, for example, we can do January 1st, 2023, and then click on save. And you know that the format in which we are going to input the date that can really depend on the website. So in this case, we need to convert the input date at the start date or whatever date we need to select in our date picker and just convert it to the format that our, that our web page will use. So for that, we are just going to use the convert date time to text. And I'm going to select that I will convert my date and the format that I will use. In this case, I will select custom and uh, you can see that I need my day, then month and finally year. And then instead of using uh, a hard coded date here, I am just going to map this uh, input in my web page to the formatted date time here. And once we have converted that, I'm just going to run. And you can see that now this workflow is taking the date that I gave it as an input. It transforms it to the date that my web page will work with, and then it just moves forward with the next steps. So this is one way to handle date pickers. Now we're going to see another example, which is in this website. And uh, you can see that the date picker is a little bit different from the other one, but at the end of the day, we always have this type of text input control in this web page and we can use that as well so we don't have to handle the errors and the year and month selector. So for that, I'm just going to go back to Power Automate and I will just start uh, a new Chrome session. And we're going to start recording 
we're going to start in this web page. And you can see that Power Automate properly recognized this as an actual text input that we can use. If I type in, that automatically records my action. And I'm going to just do that in the end date. I'm just going to change it to February. And again, you can see that Power Automate is properly recognizing what I am typing in. So then I'm just going to click on Done. And first, I'm going to delete these two steps, which I don't need. And then we can do the same thing about uh, formatting our date time as we are doing here. In this case, this second web page just requires day, month, and year. And that will match this. And I'm going to add a new input variable, which is the date end. And it's going to be a text. And we're going to set it to Dece December 31st, 2023. And we're going to just do the same thing about uh, formatting this to the actual date that we need. So I'm just going to change this instead of using date. We're going to use date end. And again, the same format. And we'll just rename this to end. Then uh, we click on save and we can just change the hard coded input here that we were doing when we were recording to the start date and end date that is formatted in the way that this web page will require. And now let's run this automation. I will just change this to maximize because I want uh, to see the whole screen and I'm going to stop the flow right after uh, we input our date so we can see it working and let's start it. You can see that we have uh, January 1st through December 31st. And you can see that by writing the text here, Power Automate is interacting properly with the date pickers, even though we're not actually using the date picker, but the text input. And finally, we're going to have a look at this last web page. That um, you can see that we have our date picker here. It's a little bit different from the other two examples that we have been looking at. And uh, you can see that we can start the date and we end it here. And that is how we can do it through the interface. But to handle this through Power Automate, there are different ways. As you can see, this even though this is a quite different date picker, it's still a text that we can use and we can update. But we can also see here that once we select a date range, you can see that the URL of the web page changes. So that means that this website has some type of um, event color that whenever we click on dates here, that redirects us to a new URL. And that is what actually loads this new data. So, so instead of us, for example, selecting these dates this way or typing in and then clicking on apply filter or something, what we can do is just to handle this URL at the top. I'm going to copy all of this. And as you can see, I have here the original URL and then we have the start date and then we have the end date. And it's go always going to be in the same format. We have year, we have month, and then we have day. And same for the end. Whatever is after this, like the T and the seconds and minutes and all of that, it's always going to be the same. So we can copy this same URL and, for example, I'm just going to change this to... April. And if I copy this, once I go to my URL, it's going to load my new date range. As you can see, it changed this to April 9th. So we can do, uh, even though we can interact with the date picker here, we can also use the option of 
working with this URL. So for that, let's go to Power Automate and I am just going to start a new browser instance. I'm going to launch a new Chrome session and here's going to ask me what's the initial URL that I want to use. So I will just copy this and paste it here. And as you can see, we need the start date and end date to be dynamic. So again, we already have these input variables as a starting and end date. So we're going to take those two for this example. So for the start date, I am going to just select the start date. And for the end date, we are going to select the formatted date for the end of the period. So then we click on save. And finally, we just need to make sure that we use the right format. In this case, this is expecting year, month, and day. So I'm just going to click uh, here and update this to year, month, and day. Uh, keep in mind that the month here is uppercase. If you use lowercase, that's going to use minutes instead of month. So it's important to do that. And I'm going to change the format for the two of them. And uh, we are going to use July 1st through December 31st. So I'm just going to click on run. And you can see here that it is. I'm just going to stop the flow because now we are no longer working with these other date pickers. So now you can see that we have lunch. This URL, it automatically loads the dates that we are working with, which is July 1st through December 31st. And that is selected properly here. And you can see that my, my report loaded this data. So this is another way in which you can handle date pickers because a lot of web pages usually do that whenever you select a date and you click on filter or, or see data or update data. Sometimes they will load a new URL and you can use that to directly send the request to show the data related to this date range. So as you can see, working with date pickers can be different depending on the web page and depending on how the web page works, you can work with the URL, but typically the uh, most of the date pickers that I have worked with usually also come along with a text input and you can take advantage of that to just uh, use it in Power Automate to input the text field instead of interacting with the hours and the days and the months and all of that because that can get a little bit complicated. So I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you so much and see you next time.